Welcome to Zoom at Times TV, and here's your host, Anita Finley. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have a, a really interesting woman from Faith Farm in ministry. As you know, many times we get people from Faith Farm and they're men, but we're always happy to have a woman to talk about how it is at Faith Farm being a woman. And this is um, Amy Keith. And Amy is executive assistant at the Faith Farm Ministries. And um, let's see, they call you the brain. Why do they call you the brain? <laughs> I, I think I've just been here a long time. I've been here almost 13 years. And um, so I've seen a lot of things happen over the years. And I've learned a lot about the, the ins and outs of the daily operations. So usually if someone has a question about something, I can, if I don't know the answer, I know where to find the answer. So. Well, Amy, yeah. you looked, you actually look familiar. I've been to so many of the graduations and so yes. many of the events and I love Faith Farm. They, they do something that's miraculous actually. And so we, we let, we're going to let you talk about that. So I guess my first question is, mm -hmm. how did you get to Faith Farm? It's, it's, one of those things I, I had been looking for something. I, I have uh, six children at home. I'm, I'm not all mine. I didn't give birth to six children, but I have three of my own and I have three stepchildren and oh. I wasn't sure I wasn't working. Um, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I was looking for something and I came across a, an advertisement for a job at Faith Farm. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll go talk to them and see, you know, they invited me to interview and um, it just seemed like a really interesting place to work and, and to be able to work in, in the ministry and in, in a, a Christian setting was, um, it seemed like the right fit. So with so a I big started. vision. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, wow. So that's yeah. quite a story. They're, well, they, you certainly filled Build the uh, necessity, it sounds like, for all those years. So you've seen people come and go. Yes, yes. And uh, it always keeps just moving along. You know what What we find, or I find especially funny, is when people think they, they're going to go to Faith Farm for to either deliver or fix things up. They come back and say, oh, my God, that's so large. You should see that place. It's like a... I said, yes, I know. It wasn't always that way. It has grown, right, Amy? Right. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Yes. And when you started, did you start in Fort Lauderdale? No, I've been here in this office the whole time. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, everyone, we talked about that. It really started with Pappy, and, and that was in Fort Lauderdale. And then yes. thankfully, we got some other land, and now we're in Palm Beach County and Okeechobee, right? That is correct. Yes, we have, I think, about 90 acres here in Boynton Beach and uh, 150 or so in Okeechobee. Um, so they're much more agricultural out in the Okeechobee area. We just got some more cattle and uh, oh, yeah. they've, yeah, they've started a sod farm. And so they're trying uh, and they're even growing bamboo up there. So they're oh. trying some different uh, micro enterprises. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, and the reason for all this is that the, they they offer over 400 men, women every year, I mean, for, for 10 months, nine months, 10 months, mm -hmm. to live free. Food, shelter, education. Uh, people do have to work and earn, you know, earn their time there, but they're happy doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an enterprise. Why don't you... Uh, when you go to work in the morning, give us a kind of like, what happens when you get to work? <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we always start in our office. We start the morning with a morning prayer. We, we all get together, which is nice. It kind of gives our day a boost. Um, and then my days are sort of, sort of predictable, but not always. I do um, everything from answering the phones and, and greeting people when they come in to uh, human resources, uh, onboarding of employees or arranging for interviews or placing ads. Um, I do uh, manage pa paper-wise and, and um, 
uh, electronic management of our fleet vehicles, keeping track of when tags need to be renewed or adding or subtracting when they come or go. Um, and then we also, since the ministry has a, a dealer license, we're a registered Florida motor vehicle dealer. So when people donate vehicles to us, we sell them in the, you know, for um, proceeds go to the ministry. And I am the dealer representative. So I do all the DMV paperwork when people come to buy vehicles. So I kind of do a lot of things. Um, so it just sort of depends on how the day goes, which direction I'm going. So. Yeah, you're quite a warrior. You do a lot of things. You never that when you first, uh, I think, went to the job, it was nothing like this, was it? That, will you answer the phones? Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it has grown over the years, but that's that's a blessing. It's it's yes. nice to be busy. Yes, it is. And so, tell us about some of the women who who really like, are you in charge of the women, or they have someone else in charge? I of I am not. They have someone else who's in charge of the women's program. So. Um, I have interaction with them here and there, and um, we do have, occasionally people will come here looking for information about the program or wanting to get into the program, so um, either over the phone or sometimes in person, so I can talk to them a little bit about how they do that and where to find the application. Occasionally, there'll be someone who's uh, made the time to come in to the office um, so I'll make sure that someone from the women's home comes here to speak to them face to face, um, whether they can check them in that day is not, you know, I, I don't always know if that's possible, but at least to get someone to um, talk to them. We, we have one person who, who did that um, on Good Friday about three years ago, I think. She came into the office and, and uh, I asked, you know, if I could help her and she had tears in her eyes and she said, I want to get better. And wow. I was like, okay. So I got someone, the intake person from um, the women's home to come and talk to her. She ended up going through the program and then she stayed as an advanced student for another year. And, and now she's working for us as the house mother. So oh, now yeah. that's a real success story. Isn't yeah. It? Her life really turned around. So that was, it's, it's always nice to be able to be a, a little part of, of their of recovery. So you don't actually live on Faith Farm on the premises as some other people do? No, I do not. Okay, so you 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 work five days a week? Mm-hmm, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I just want everyone to know again, you're listening to Amy, uh, Amy Keith, who's executive assistant at Faith Farm Ministries. If you have something that you want to ask or to get pick up or deliver or do something, you're going to go to faithfarm.org, faithfarm.org on their website. It will tell you everything. Of course, you can, if you're, you think you want to talk to Amy, you can then, there'll be a phone number there that you can uh, call. I guess I yes. could give the phone number now, but what do you think? That's fine. Uh, okay. You have so the, the number. phone number, right? Well, I have the Fort Lauderdale one which is oh. nine five. I don't have the, the Palm Beach for some reason here on the ad. Well, that's okay. I can give it. Please. Um, it's uh, 561-737-2222. Okay, I'm going to do that again. 561-737-2222. Mm -hmm. seven, seven, two, 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 two. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what you can do. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's just go through some of the, the issues. I always tell people, you know, a lot of people contribute to charities. And yes, this is a charity, but it's a kind of a charity that you know exactly where the money is going. You see the, you see the lives of the, and I'm just going to talk about mostly the men, because they have so many more men than women, mm -hmm. people who have done just what, you know, what Amy said, that they come in and they, they don't really know where to turn, if they're going to live. They've been doing things that are, they're ashamed of. And they need a kind, a kind organization, a kind person. They need to know that they're loved, that they're okay. And that's what Faith Farm really does for one, doesn't it, Amy? Yes, that's, that's our main purpose, is, is we're here to 
to welcome them and, and to help them turn their lives around to break the cycle of addiction. Um, we try to give them the, the love that they need and the encouragement and the, the tools um, necessary to help them get over the addiction and move on with their life, move back into society uh, as, a, as a more productive person, hopefully a more faithful person and, and um, someone who is willing to consider others over themselves, because a lot of times addicts don't do that. Well put, very well put. And when you first joined Faith Farm Ministries, I, I think that there was more alcoholism than there is today, wasn't there? I think so, yes. <laughs> it, I've seen it progress over the years. Um, initially, I think it was mostly alcohol and um, maybe some prescription painkillers. But now you hear a lot more about the opioids and the um, synthetic drugs that are out there. And there are just a lot of newer, I guess, ways for, for people to get into trouble. Yeah, to get high. So that's just interesting mm-hmm. for me. So I would think that alcoholism is still running rampant, but maybe it's now covered up by the other things. They can get a faster high. I yeah, I think probably especially the younger people seem to be more more about the the opioids and I think maybe that has to do with it. They're just it's it's quick and they don't get, you know, with alcohol sometimes you don't like the taste or you know there are different reasons maybe that they don't want to have it, but, you know, if they can just do something quick and easy and it it makes them feel good and they're having a good time, then that's in their mind, the, the better choice. So when people come to you, they have to be off these, uh, this, whether it's alcoholism or, oh, you know, any, any other drug, don't they? I mean, you don't, can't take them because, so how do they get over that first? It really depends on the individual. There are uh, detox centers out there. Um, a lot of times they may go to a detox center and their, their specialty is to help them through. Sometimes they may need certain medications to help get, their, get the drugs out of their system. And since we're not a medical facility, we're not able to do that. Um, some people just do it on their own. They just have had enough and they reach uh, their rock bottom and they just say, I'm not going to do it anymore. And they stop doing it. And then they call us and say, I need help. So it it sort of depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. I see. And, you know, we heard stories and let me just tell you, my guest again is Amy Keith and Amy is a executive assistant there at Faith Farm Ministries. We also hear many times that the parents or the spouse or someone calls and says, you have to help my husband or my son. Mm -hmm. And that's not it, is it? That doesn't usually work. And and I have talked to many parents and spouses and siblings over the years, um, desperate to, to get help for their loved one. But until that, the person with the addiction, until that person is, is ready to actually ask for help, it, it doesn't really matter if someone else, does the paperwork for them or puts in the application. If, if they're not ready, they're not ready. And even if they get dropped off here and checked in, there's not, we can't hold them. So if they decide to walk away the next day, there's nothing we can do. So they really have to be ready within themselves before they can do the work. You know, I was thinking about this as you were talking, there are people who have hip and knee operations, you know, replacements, Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that when they get, you know, after the operation, the work first begins. They have to do all the, right? All the therapy. So exactly. Exactly. It's not the same, but on the other hand, it is the same. You want to accomplish anything, it takes work. Right. It takes work and you can't, um, it's, it's not easy. It takes work and, and you have to be willing to put the work in and you can't depend on the painkillers or something else to make it easy for you. Yeah. You know, Amy, what I, and I'm sure you've been impressed by this too, to at the graduations to see the camaraderie and the mm-hmm. love from yes. a lot of the, the students and 
sometimes, you know, and they all, they're, sometimes they want to talk about what happened to them before. And sometimes it's down and dirty. It's like very sad, but they, they're out there because that's what makes them realize that they're much better now, that they, they wouldn't do that anymore, right? Yes, definitely. I, I took my kids to a graduation once uh, several years ago, and one of the women was graduating and she was giving her testimony and talking about all the things she had that had happened with her. And one of them was that she had been out, you know, drinking and doing drugs with a boyfriend and woke up the next day and he was next to her dead. And oh. so that was a real eye opener for her. And And I felt like that was good for my children to hear that, you know, this is, this is why you don't want to do these things. That's, you know, nothing good comes out of, you know, you get your five minutes of, of having a great, you know, party, and then you end up, you know, hurting your family and yourself. That's so true, Amy. You know, peer pressure is very hard. And I know sometimes parents say, I don't want you going with those kids anymore very hard to do that because they don't understand it but it is the peer pressure that they some people feel it and some people don't they mm -hmm. some people can rise above it said well I don't want to do that the other thing that I wanted to share with people is that sometimes some of the now students before got into some serious trouble they wound up before a court they were going to be sentenced to go to prison but Faith Farm intervened and they talk to the judge and say, well, if we took that person, would we be able to keep him out of prison if he stays or she stays doing the right thing? And the judges now pretty much agree to that because they know that Faith Farm is very responsible, right? Yes, yes, exactly. There, are, We have had many cases of that where there were um, in some sort of legal trouble and and we're able to be court ordered to come to Faith Farm and, and to finish the program. And they are monitored and, and, you know, their parole officers will check up on them or they have court dates that they still have to meet and we can help them get where they need to go to complete um, all the necessary items that they need for the courts, as well as being here and, and helping them to get their lives together and, and beat the addiction. You know, I mean, the reason we do this is because a lot of people don't know there is such an organization that can do this. And we want everyone to know that. We try to do this through our interviews, through the advertising, through the editorials, the columns. Um, and we hope that people will donate um, besides the items that they're going to donate, but they could always use money. I always mm -hmm. ask people when they're working with their lawyer in their will, you know, you can put 5,000, 1,000, 5,000, 100,000, whatever you can do, mm -hmm. you'll know that you almost become immortal because you're helping huge amounts of people with that money. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and we have had uh, several of those, but they're, you know, always welcome. We, we do the best we can with the proceeds from our thrift stores and we're, we're grateful for those material donations. Um, and then we have a few, uh, we have a big salvage operation that brings in some income, uh, recycling, um, but definitely individual donors help to push us over the, the hump sometimes and, and make a big difference. So we're truly grateful for anyone who wishes to donate either in a will or we can, you know, we have recurring donations you can do monthly if you want. There are different ways. Um, and we are 501c3. So you get your receipt at the end of the year that you can use with your taxes. So it's a, it's a win for everyone. <laughs> so any of you out there who are listening and if you're hoarders, <laughs> just, just look at everything and say, what do I absolutely need? I think I could donate this to Faith Farm and they're going to, it's going to turn into magical money if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other yeah. thing that um, I think was great over the years, once someone graduates, some of them are so interested in education, you've been able to join with a university that they get some college credits. Can you share that? 
Sure. We work uh, together with South Florida Bible College um, in other colleges, too. We, you know, they can go to some of the local community colleges, um, but South Florida Bible College has been very helpful in, in um getting our students enrolled, helping them with financial aid or scholarships, um, really giving them the boost that they need to be able to start the education that maybe they weren't able to do previously. And so we've had a lot of success stories with that. Well, you've been moving back earlier than that. Some of them don't have uh, high school diplomas. That is correct. And we do uh, work on their GED. Anyone who doesn't have a high school diploma, that's something we want them to have at a minimum before they leave here. Um, so we work on uh, whatever educational materials they need to be able to study and, and get up to speed so that they can take a GED exam before they leave here and at least have that piece of paper in their hand and, and that the confidence that goes with it. To, to move on. No, Amy, I'm so glad you just said that, the confidence. So imagine here, here's somebody, they were on drugs or they're alcohol, they don't like themselves, they are down in the gutter in a sense. Mm -hmm. They do the 10 months or the nine months, whatever, you know, however long it takes. And now they have a high school diploma, which they didn't have. They can go to college. They have learned a trade because when they work at Faith Farm, they either get to be in the kitchen or drive trucks or or mechanics or do things. Can you imagine what that's like? Well, you can, but I'm talking to the people out there. Can you imagine what that's, what's done for them? And they do it. And it's under a lot of duress sometimes. I mean, they first don't wanna be there. And then after a while, they understand how good this is. And now you've taken someone, whether it's a man or a woman and made that person whole. And it's not, <laughs> it's not easy. And they, you don't want them to slip back and some do, but and they come back, but it is a real miracle organization. And I don't use that word casually, but what yeah. you do there is, I, I am so supportive of Faith Farm Ministries. I mm -hmm. can't tell you. Yes. Well, and we appreciate that. And I know, I know you have been for a long time, um, a, a great advocate for us. And, and we appreciate getting the word out because a lot of times people don't know, they don't maybe don't know where to look, they don't know who to call. So it's nice to be, to have someone who's letting, letting the public know that there is somewhere to go um, if they need help. Just think about that. They, they come there, they may not even have many clothes, you know, much clothing. Yeah. They don't have much. They come there, they get a bed, they get food, three meals a day. Mm -hmm. uh, they get companionship. They get friendship, they learn a trade, yes. they get loving people. To, I mean, you can see how you are. I mean, you couldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> and and, uh, and they, this is really an incredible organization. And I don't know of others. There are other organizations that help people. That's not, mm -hmm. that, I don't mean that's not true, but right. there's something at the heart of Faith Farm that is irreplaceable. I just believe that. I think so too. There's just something special about it. And, and we're very blessed that we've been able to continue for as long as we have. I think we're in our 70th year now. So, and it's still a free program and, and we're still trying to transform lives on a daily basis. So it's, it's a blessing to be a part of it. And now with the COVID problem, this even added another layer for you, didn't it? It did. It slowed us down a little bit. We had to, we actually had to close the thrift stores for, I think, about four weeks. Um, but we took it as a positive and we went in and we, uh, the, the students who were here and the employees, we, um, no one really got sent home. Um, they, we just worked to clean things out. We repainted, we reorganized, um, gave everything uh, a facelift so that when we did reopen our thrift stores, it was, you know, new and things were moved around a little bit and it looked pretty and clean. And so it was, you know, a blessing in disguise, I guess. So nobody actually got COVID on campus? Uh, not really. I mean, we have had a few here and there, but 
Uh, nothing serious. Nothing serious. No, no. That's amazing, actually, when you think of it, right? It is, really. I mean, yes. Yeah. Well, I know I've been very, I was very anxious to get my shots and my family and everybody I know because, I mean, no one wants to wind up in a hospital and possibly, you know, get extremely sick. So right. it, it was a good, a good thing to uh, uh, get your shots and all. Well, Mm-hmm. You know, Faith Farm Ministries is going to go a much longer time. And I know that. I think <laughs> maybe you'll be there for the hundredth ah, the hundredth year celebration. Hopefully you're young. I'm not sure, but I don't maybe. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> Thirty more years. But anyway, so I guess we've run out of time, Dan, huh? Okay. Yes. Okay, well, this wasn't, see, this wasn't painful, Amy, was it? No, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so pretty. Yeah. So Amy Keefe. Thank you. Uh, Executive Assistant, Faith Farm Ministries. And the phone number, again, I'm going to just uh, tell you, you can call the Palm Beach County. It's 561-737-2222. And uh, you could go on their website, which is faithfarm.org. <clears throat> and keep doing what you do, Amy. We really, really appreciate that you came on today. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> If you or someone you know is having an addiction problem, there's a place that can help. It's called Faith Farm Ministries. What's important for those without addiction is that Faith Farm Ministries is supported by their three amazing thrift stores and by donations. Most people are not aware of the wonderful work they do for our fellow citizens. The way you can help is to make sure that their work continues. It's easy. Bring unwanted items to their locations during the day or put them in their drop boxes. Then, be sure to go and buy new or used items from their thrift stores. They're located in Fort Lauderdale, Boynton Beach, and in Okeechobee. Faith Farm Ministries makes the entire process a win-win to help and to get help, maybe even for yourself. For information, call 561-737-2259. That's Faith Farm Ministries, 561-737-2259. Or go online to www.faithfarm.org.